Hello everyone. Welcome to Book Club Preview. I'm Michael and today we're looking at Charlie Thorne and the Last Equation chapter 32 and 33. Now this chapter starts off with Charlie oh, just struggling. What does this equation mean? I can't get it. I can't understand it. She tries to think of all sorts of different tricks but she just feels so frustrated because she's never really pushed herself. And now, when she's trying to, she's not really succeeding. She looks over at Agent Moon, and Agent Moon is off talking, or waiting to talk to, um, Director Carter. And it seems like Agent Moon's pretty stressed, because Agent Moon stops paying attention to Charlie. And Charlie realizes, <gasps> right now, if I wanted to, I could run. And Agent Moon would never be able to find me. She thinks about it, but decides to stay, especially thinking of her brother Dante being dead, which hopefully he's not. We don't know yet. So she decides to stay. Agent Moon comes over as Charlie's looking at the note again. And Charlie's like, oh, I can't get it. I just don't know. I'm just a girl. And Agent Moon says, hey, don't talk like that. Charlie's like, what? What do you mean? Don't blame just being a girl, right? That has nothing to do with it. You're a strong, independent woman. Oh, and then she says, Charlie, you can do this. And Charlie feels a lot of thankfulness. Wow, thanks, Agent Moon. Agent Moon's on the phone. Oh, it's Director Carter. I got to go. And she goes and talks to Director Carter again. But now Charlie feels, yes, I can do this. And... As she's kind of thinking, like, I can do this, she looks over at some monks, and they're all carrying little prayer books or Bibles. And she realizes, oh, there's got to be something more to the clue. Not just this equation, but the book that it was in. There's got to be more. And that leads us to the next chapter, where she thinks about, okay, Sherlock Holmes, um... The author who wrote uh, Co Ar Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. It's got to be something more to that. Well, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, uh, he was really cool. Maybe Einstein would have respected him. But by the time Einstein was around, uh, the Arthur of Sherlock Holmes was a little weird. Um, he believed these really fake stories and um, was talking about all sorts of crazy stuff. So uh, Einstein probably wouldn't have liked him that much. Hmm. But there would have been something more. You know, Einstein always said that God is in the details. That, you know, looking deeply into something, you could find a lot of answers. And so she starts to think about Sherlock Holmes. And, okay, what would Sherlock Holmes always say? Or, or the way Sherlock Holmes thought. Sherlock Holmes would always say, it's elementary. Well, okay, that's not actually in the books, but in a play made from the books, that was a famous quote. It's elementary. Hmm. Okay. Well, Einstein probably would have wanted, like, a really well-rounded person to solve his clue. Not just a smart person. Not just a genius, but a, but a good person. We call it a well-rounded. Uh, maybe you have a good character, and you're smart, and you're kind. Right, all things um, you have strengths in all areas, and then, boom, Charlie gets it. <gasps> I know it. She looks at the equation and she just relaxes and lets the numbers come to her, and whoo, she sees the answer. She's cracked the code, and she knows where Pandora is hidden, or at least the next clue. And that's how it ends. Some vocabulary. Stymied means to be um, thwarted, um, to be blocked, to um, be stopped. Futility means like hopeless, um, no point. Let her mind grow foul. <laughs> foul means rotten or um, spoiled. And so usually we talk about that with like food or gardens. Um, but her mind, she didn't exercise it and work it, and so it kind of got spoiled. Lapse of judgment uh, means not thinking correctly. 
Uh, if you were in your correct mind, you would have not done that, or you would have done that maybe even. But maybe you're tired or sleepy or uh, something was going on and you didn't think clearly and you skipped a good judgment. You skipped a good choice. Lapse means like a pause. So lapse in judgment is making a bad choice, really. Uh, whisked back is like pulled or whipped um, back. And as she's focusing in on this equation, Agent Moon says, hey, Charlie. <gasps> oh! She gets whisked back from her powerful thoughts. And I think the last one here on this page is stumped, which is, um, again, like kind of like stymied, blocked, um, walled, unable to go further. Oh, I guess there's one more. Struck a chord in her means um, something like if you're playing a guitar, and it has a good sound. And that happens to you in your heart when something says something or maybe you see a really beautiful piece of art. Wah, 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 wah. There's that vibration that matches your heart vibration. Struck a chord in her or in you. A few more here. Uh, blatant means obvious, clear, easy to see. Hoax is a lie or a trick. Ample means enough. Duped is also like tricked. Epiphany means oh, that sudden realization of knowing something. Oh, I got it. Um, Einstein would say, Eureka. I don't know if he would say that, but I think that statement is famous for him. Eureka. That suddenly, oh, I got it. An epiphany. And that leads me to discussion question. Do you have a fictional character that you like more than any other? Maybe like Einstein liked Sherlock Holmes. And of course, please make your own discussion question. That is all the time that we have for today. But thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Book Club Preview. I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Hey, if you have any questions about the video today, uh, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. If you had any other vocabulary words that you wanted to know what they meant, uh, let me know. And also, if you're interested in maybe joining one of these book clubs, um, please leave a comment and I'll get back to you. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.